On today's adventure, we find an epic mountain road. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. The 2022 Lexus LX600 is the closest thing we can buy to a Toyota Land Cruiser here in North America. The good news is that because this is based on the same global platform as the Land Cruiser, it gets many of the same features. Under this skin is an advanced four-wheel drive system, available variable height suspension, and it even has off-road programs to make a novice an expert in off-road conditions. The trim we have here is the LX600 Ultra Luxury, what that means is that it has special attention to the second row. This is essentially an executive SUV. As the highest end version of the LX600 you can buy, this one is rather spendy. As you see it here, you're looking at 128,030 US dollars, including destination. For that price, you would think this would be a no compromise SUV. But the fact is, this is based on a Land Cruiser. It wasn't designed to be a luxury vehicle first and foremost. So there are some compromises that are a bit odd. In this trim, the third row has been removed, which would normally help with cargo capacity. But because this has an executive second row, here you only get 41 cubic feet. Now, one thing that is um, indicative of this being built on a proper off-road ready vehicle is that the spare tire is actually underneath which is where you want it. You don't want to have to unload all your gear if you should happen to have a flat. Uh, yep, and that's a full size one down there too. Even though this shares the platform with the new Sequoia and Tundra, it actually gets a variation on that powertrain. Uh, instead of a hybrid assist, this is a straight up V6 3.5 liter with a twin turbocharger. As you see it here, it puts out 409 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. It is connected to a 10-speed automatic transmission, and it powers all four wheels with Lexus's advanced four-wheel drive system. Yeah, it's got a proper lockable Torsen limited slip in the middle. Okay, this is pretty nice. Uh, but one thing that I am missing here is a big panorama sunroof, which seems to be almost commonplace. Instead, it's very dark. I mean, the dark headliner, the dark leather, uh, the dark features, it just really feels a little bit like a cave. And these seats are very high. I feel like there's just a lot of unused space under them. It's like higher than it needs to be. I don't have a ton of headroom here. Um, I do get this big screen. But what does this screen do? This is the first time I've actually seen this screen, uh, which is an extension of the new Lexus infotainment system. Um, and <laughs> what we have here is not a lot. I mean, I can pick what my audio source is and I can pick to screencast. Uh, let's see, where do I screencast? Uh, we have Miracast. Now, Miracast is based on a standard. But the fact is the implementation is a mess. You do have an HDMI video input down here, but I think it's highly unlikely that somebody's going to bring an Xbox with them. And if you have an iPad, your iPad's going to be the size of this device. So why would you even plug it in to this screen? It makes no sense. It's like second row entertainment for people who don't actually use entertainment. That's weird. I don't like it. So the second row here does have massage units, which I love to see. However, Massage units are not in the first row. They're not even an option in the first row. And to me, that seems a bit weird because I don't know how it is in the rest of the world, uh, but here in the United States, if even if you're rich and famous, you don't necessarily have a driver. And if you're thinking of, well, executive fleet services, they want high-end luxury cars to, to be you know fleet vehicles. This vehicle doesn't make any sense for that either. You don't need the advanced off-road features. And as far as cabin, you have so many compromises here for space. This is not a roomy experience for anyone. There's just not enough leg room. If you have four adults with long legs in this vehicle, somebody is going to have to compromise. For other features, we do get privacy screens, we have a place to put our knees, and we have beverage holders up here. And then we also have this cool multifunction display that lets me control my seats, both heating, cooling, 
um, audio, I can also do massage units and all of that. Plus, I also get a charging pad for my device in the second row, which is neat. Further, we have this origami style flip up center console, which is a cool feature. And we have headphones that are wired. When was the last time you saw wired headphones? I just, this whole, this whole cabin confuses me. But for today, none of that really matters because we're not going to be chauffeuring the rich and famous. Instead, we're taking this on a journey to find an epic mountain view. The inside of this LX600 is very familiar. I mean, we've been in them before. Uh, we have here a dual infotainment system. The top one is your typical music and whatnot. Um, I have Apple CarPlay turned on right now, but it also comes standard with Lexus's new built-in system, which includes maps, um, audio, all that kind of stuff. Below it is actually the screen that we're interested in most today. Uh, this is where you set up all of the off-road modes, and we have a whole lot of them here. Uh, we have the multi-terrain select system, which has different settings for different conditions. Um, and then we also have the crawl control system, which only works when you're actually in for low. Now, once we're in for low, we can turn on the crawl control system. And this is basically like a cruise control for off-road driving, which is kind of cool. Is it necessary? Not really. Uh, but for somebody who's new to off-roading, it can make tricky situations a lot easier. Of course, this also has the MTS system, which we've used quite a lot on our Toyota 4Runner because, of course, Toyota and Lexus share a lot of the same tech. And uh, with MTS, we can pick between all sorts of different drive modes. And the drive modes are actually a little bit different when you're in 4L as opposed to 4 high. Uh, in low, you get the options for auto, sand, mud, and rock. Go into 4 high, and we have dirt, sand, mud, and deep snow. Obviously, settings that are appropriate to a 4 high um, situation. Now, if I want to lock that center torsion limited slip differential, there's a button right here for it. Down here, we can also control the ride height because, of course, this is equipped with the optional adaptive variable height suspension. Uh, to go to my different heights, I just hit a button here. It's also tied into um, the four-wheel drive system, so if you pick an off-road mode that needs more height, it'll just auto-adjust for you. So just driving around town, it's about eight and a half inches of ground clearance. But when going off-road, I don't know what the maximum ride height is because simply Lexus has not published that. But we have a way of finding out. Let's raise this up to its maximum height, grab a tape measure, and find out. So I'm going to measure first from the lowest point, which is the rear differential. We are looking at roughly... Wow, oh, that's nine and a half, nine and three quarters of ground clearance. And then if I look at the sides, we're looking at over a foot, 13 and a half. Without important details sorted, it's time now to head into the mountains. Recently, I have moved out to the Olympic Peninsula, which means we have all new mountain roads to explore. Now, there is a big difference between the Olympics and the Cascades. I used to live next to the Cascades. That's where I-90 goes through. Uh, that's very close to Seattle, so you get a ton of people up on those roads. The Olympic Peninsula has a much smaller population. That means that the forest roads are far less used. Let's saddle up. Time to head out. Okay, let's see what this has under that hood. Punch it. Oh. So of course, a lot of people are sad that it doesn't have a V8 anymore. I am not one of those people. I think that this 3.5 liter twin turbocharged V6 is just fine. The last time I drove an LX, it just had the standard F-Sport suspension. This one has the adaptive variable suspension. Not only does it control ride height, it also uh, counteracts dynamics of the vehicle to improve handling. And when you have a vehicle this big, it's really good to have. As I'm going around a corner, if I put my brakes on, 
I can feel the active suspension actually working against the nose dive. So you kind of have this action reaction feeling that it's a little weird, I will be completely honest. But once you get used to it, it really makes a lot of sense. And it makes a vehicle of this size just handle a lot more comfortably. You're not getting that same kind of roly poly feel that you would get with standard suspension. Not only is this vehicle quick, it's also really comfortable to drive. I am actually having a great time here. The seats feel good, the steering wheel feels good. Uh, the only real issue is honestly this cabin it's a little weird i like the stacked screens i think that they make a lot of sense but everything just feels really cramped in here uh, kind of like they shoehorned in more features than they had space for and let's talk about those features because yeah this is of course an executive style vehicle and being the the top luxury model uh, it has full-on luxury seating in the second row but not in the first row the second row has executive seats that can practically recline all the way they have massage units just really so many features back there uh, it even has a wireless charging pad for a compatible device however up here we don't get massage units uh, we don't even get a wireless charging pad there's a spot for it but it's not here <laughs> That again just goes to show that the luxury in this vehicle is about the second row, not about the driver. And I find that just kind of a weird omission. Like why no charging pad up front for the driver on a vehicle that costs over $120,000? I just don't get it. So is this Lexus the LX600 I would get? No way, it makes no sense. I would not buy a vehicle like this and then be in the second row. A vehicle like this is fun to drive. It has good features. It's for off-roading, which you just don't need an executive second row for. What I want, I want to see an LX600 that is very limited in the features, has the full off-road stuff, and also comes with all-terrain tires. That's what I want to see. And not these silly 22-inch rims. I want to see something that actually uses the capability to the maximum. Will we get those here in the US? Uh, hopefully. So today's adventure isn't about covering every single feature of this vehicle. Nope, it is about finding an epic viewpoint. We are gonna go up a mountain uh, that frankly is pretty narrow in spots. Uh, and uh, we're gonna see how well this big boy can deal with it. Now, of course, this is based on the International Land Cruiser. Uh, and because of that, it has all of the traction systems that we need. And most important, this one has the height adjustable suspension. Not only does it act and react to the way you're driving, you can also gain a couple inches in ride height. And that will be key for what we're doing today. Because even though what we're doing isn't gonna be like extreme rock crawling, uh, there are going to be some ditches, uh, drainage ditches and stuff that we're going to have to get over and uh, not damage the vehicle. Because, of course, this is on loan to us from Lexus. It's over $120,000. Let's not mess it up. <laughs> Cuts are no joke. Um, I have my suspension up on high. Let's see. So I am just in regular four high. I don't think I need to do anything, but this might give us an opportunity to see how it shifts power around the system. Oof. Or at the very least, what great articulation this thing has. If I was to take a Subaru or a Hyundai up here, it would definitely have a little more issue. Uh, but I think they would make it up ultimately. I don't know, ground clearance on this. This one's particularly gnarly. Picking up a wheel. No, is it reaching down? Man, this thing is just so capable just by the sheer mechanics of it. It's great. Yeah, we're not gonna have any issues today. So heading up the road here, it is, uh, you know, starting off pretty easy. We got a tree down here, kind of, sort of down. Let's go to that tree. Oh, so apparently I would guess here that there was, ooh, 
already a big bump. Um, I would guess there was probably a storm earlier this year. Forest Service has come through, cut lines, so we should be good. Uh, should I have brought a chainsaw with me? Probably. But there's no wind today, so it seems unlikely that we'll have any other trees fall. So um, as far as vehicle setup goes, right now I am just in uh, four high. There's no reason to change that. It'll automatically distribute power as necessary uh, with that Torsen limited slip differential in the middle. Uh, if I need to, I can always lock that later. Now this is actually one thing that I like about this vehicle is it's not huge. Um, gonna scrape? No. It's not huge, which especially in the Pacific Northwest, you really need to have narrow vehicles simply because of overgrowth, down trees, that kind of stuff. And there are a lot of them out here today. Now these cuts, you might be wondering what the heck are these cuts? They basically control water flow so it doesn't go down the road and instead exits the road. What you end up with are these really deep little ruts um, and we, we actually use this, it's one of our normal testing things, as we call it a cross cut. Now, this looks super easy, but I bet you, if we ever took a regular little crossover up this thing, it would be grinding on those and struggling, pushing power around. This vehicle really makes it look easy, and it's because of the very competent four-wheel drive system. It's a long way down. <laughs> Up, and this is an even deeper one. Let's see how we doing there. Okay, we got this. So if you're interested in doing runs like this where you're driving up mountains and you know finding adventurous locations just basically open up google maps find a spot that's kind of near you and then see if other people have driven there typically if somebody if, if a place is kind of popular or worth going you very often will find somebody has posted a panorama view so you can get a full 360 view of that location uh, that's exactly how i found this location uh, and i think you guys will really enjoy the view once we get there. And this vehicle is a perfect type of vehicle for this trip. Uh, this is a fairly easy trail on X off-road uh, system, rates it a three out of 10, but uh, honestly, it's, it's not that hard. But you do need to have a little ground clearance specifically for those cross cuts, which can vary in size pretty dramatically. Uh, the cross cuts also prevent you from absolutely blasting down these roads, which is a good thing because uh, roads like this are not maintained regularly. For all we know, around one corner, there may not be any road. We just don't know. So far, no real reason to break out the big guns, and by that I mean traction systems and switching drive modes. We have plenty of clearance and plenty of capability. So, so far this vehicle, not only is it being really good at handling uh, those, those ditches, it's also extremely smooth. I mean, this is one of the most comfortable forest road experiences I've had in a long time. Now, if they just had massage seats up here, that would be a total win. Whoop. Ah, sometimes you don't see them in the shadows. Gotta watch for those. Because, of course, the issue is, first off, not necessarily that big cliff to our left here, uh, but really the issue is um, not seeing one of those and smashing the nose in. Because you can cause considerable damage to any vehicle, uh, even if it has ground clearance, if you hit it too fast. Because once the suspension compresses, uh, you have no clearance left. And boom, there goes something vital, and you're stuck on a mountain with no cellular signal. Uh, now, something always to be prepared with is make sure you have some kind of a satellite communicating device. I have a Garmin. Um, cool thing about the new iPhone uh, is it actually has satellite communication built in, which is awesome. I'm totally getting one because of that. This is not a sponsored thing. I am just stoked that they finally have that capability built into the iPhone. Uh, that will absolutely save lives. So you might be noticing on the sides of the roads, there's been a few big rocks there. Yeah, because there's a sheer cliff up on the right and a sheer cliff down on the left. That means rocks everywhere. <laughs> so we do have to be careful um, 
as we go around corners, keep an eye open for those because uh, those will come out of nowhere and get ya. So far, I'm loving this. This is great. No, no sign of wildlife so far, uh, but midday, usually wildlife's not gonna be out and about. It's usually an early evening thing. And we do have wild cats and bears out here, so we do have to watch out for those. Okay, we are fitting through all of the brush, which is nice. There we go. Man, that's a steep cliff. Let's go a little closer to it. Dang. I always wonder what it's like to be the guy who makes these things. You know, he was out there blasting rock and bulldozing on the edge of a cliff going, yeah, I think it'll hold. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Of course, so far I have not even touched the MTS system, uh, nor the, this looks like it was a landslide. Uh, <laughs> what was I saying? Oh yeah, I haven't even touched the MTS system. There's no reason to. This is just a dirt road at this point with a few little active ruts. Um, but still, this is perfect for this kind of a vehicle because uh, it's comfortable. I have a commanding view. Bump. Oh, yep, there's another one. Apparently not a commanding view enough to find those ruts. But overlanding vehicles aren't necessarily about rock crawling. That's a totally different thing. That's why people don't call Wranglers overland vehicles. Uh, it's because they're designed for more extreme conditions. Whereas overlanding, you're going off on an adventure, usually down uh, some place that does not require extreme rock crawling. Although there might be a few of those instances, that's not the main point of the adventure. You're finding, you're going on adventurous roads. Like, I, I didn't expect a landslide to be here. Uh, this is actually a great opportunity for me to use my surround view camera. Uh, where is that? Boom, right there. I think we'll barely fit. Eee, that's tight. Okay, definitely don't want anything bigger than this. So as we go higher up, of course, uh, we are getting thinner air because we are going to get up to about 3,000 feet. Now, that's not significant uh, for breathing, but it is something to be aware of. So probably don't want to go jogging up here, for example. Unless you're into that. I still have my suspension in high. Drive mode set to comfort, and it's just, it's great. So we could take a vehicle like this onto you know, more extreme stuff, but that's not what, who's gonna do that with a Lexus, right? Um, I have been out in the snow on a mountain in the middle of nowhere and come across a couple in a Land Cruiser drinking espresso that they made out of the tailgate. Seriously, that has happened. I think that really speaks to the type of people that buy this kind of vehicle. You know, they want adventure, but they also want comfort and a warm espresso when they, when they feel like it. Oh boy, branches. Um, I'm gonna break some of those branches back. Be right back. Oh, yeah. Time to get back in, continue with this adventure. Okay, now that I got those branches trimmed, let's uh, see if we can get through without scratching this. Yes. It's kind of crazy how fast these things grow over. Like, I can come back in a couple weeks and this will be completely unpassable simply because of overgrowth. I mean, we could do it, but we would also like completely damage our paint in the process. Now, if Lexus is watching this over in PR, I want to point out this vehicle, when it was dropped off for us as a loaner, already had two very deep scratches down the paint. Don't blame it on us. <laughs> okay, so if you find three deep scratches, then you can blame it on us. That that third one, yeah, that's that's on me. But we're trying here. Man, it's getting rockier. Hello, massive drop. Wow. 
can't even see the bottom. <laughs> but the suspension's doing great. Now the tires that we have here are of course just all seasons. They are not great, but um, they are perfectly suitable for an adventure like this. Oh man, check this view out. Ah! Okay, this is cool. And there's a big ass rock slide. Let's let's step out and check this out. Wow. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Till next time.